All right, it is time for day two. So today's plans are pretty much just to rush the rest of normal mode, hit level 30-ish, and then we're going to try to check out what our class mods look like because they're new, they have different names, they have different stuff. So I wanna see what they're like. We're waiting to level 30, of course, because we want to see the Tina comms as well. So I figured we just knock them all out in one go. We'll have to start pirate DLC to be able to like look but it should be good. All right, cool. 5.8%. So we're pretty much going to wear this until we hit level 80. Just because, I mean, it's it's nice to just level up faster. A whole 6% off of however many levels. That's going to save us hundreds of thousands of XP worth of farm, basically. All right, can I one-shot him? Probably, right? Yeah, okay. That's a lot of damage. So, can I one-shot them with the rocket? Or do I need to go invisible? Probably. Okay, yeah, no, they're gonna take a couple hits. Hold on. Okay, yeah, cool. We can totally just one-shot him with the shotgun. Is that Thick Zafford? <laughs> I hate that I even said that. Imbo Hodunk? Why would you do this to me? True. I'm sure to someone this has some curb appeal. Alright, generic gun character versus normal mode, Bloodwing. Okay, no. Oh, uh, hey, please don't. Okay, yeah, no, he did. That's nice. That one-shot potential is super duper nice. I know that later in the game we're not going to be able to, like, one-shot things like that, but that extra, like, 500% damage? Yeah, that extra 500% damage is really fun to play with. Wait for it. Alright, so for Bunker, we don't have Boar. So this will be a pretty normal Bunker fight overall. Probably just gonna do Slag, do Shu to cry because he didn't die immediately. Maybe we could try Mag Dumping with the Launcher but I doubt that'll do too much. So it'll just be a, a good old boring old gunfight, I think. Actually, Elimination Protocol might be really nice, so we might mess with that. And we're right next to Retargeting Protocols, so I want to see what this is about. So this might be up next. Alright, cool. So, level 22. Let's see what this is about. So, it triggers like Discord, but I don't think it requires stacks. Okay, so it's active. And then it's gone at the end of a magazine? Or at the end of, like, at the next reload? Okay. That's kind of interesting. So... If you manual reload, your next magazine does 20% more gun damage and 20% more crit. Which sounds like it's just encouraging you to reload after every kill instead of at the end of a magazine. 
which I'm here for it. I guess it does give you something to juggle, something to pay attention to, alongside like an elimination protocol. But really, you don't have to focus on this one as much as you do this one. That's fun, I guess. It gives you a rotation to think about. Time. What is this? Why are you up here? Alright, whatever. Alright, so we did some damage. Which is surprising. Normally he doesn't care about rockets. Also, that lifesteal was really, really nice. Did you see how much health we got back from that? Alright, cool. So now we just play gun character versus bunker. Alright, well, bunker down. We can now start specking fast hands, so that'll be super duper nice. Huh. Okay, we got our legendary comm, that's super cool. So it gives cooldown and gun damage. And then it gives us minus status effect duration, which is sick. More to killing blow, which is also kind of fun. More weapon accuracy and recoil reduction. Extra movement speed and jump height while our shield is broken. And then more damage reduction while our shield is depleted. That's really, really nice. I didn't expect to find this today. I thought that would be like a way later thing. But that's cool, because we're going to look at the other comms today too. Oh yeah, I do get increased movement speed while I'm in Viz now. And we got our Bada. Sweet. Alright, cool. So this character is now geared up as well as he could be. So, because of our comm, I think we move like 50% faster while we're invis. And invis lasts for like 8 seconds in this mod. So that's a lot of movement speed for a lot of time, which is sick. Oh god, I'm dead. Alright, uh, new status effect, death. How do I deal with this? Sweet. Best way to deal with the status effect. I am hitting air shots today. Oh my goodness. Okay. This feels good. Give me XP. Drop XP. XP. B. Thank you. Alright. 27. Okay. I feel like that opening shot does more than 5 times damage. There's no way that's only 5 times. That was... Way too much. I just want a rocket jump right now. Because it almost looks exactly like a rocket jumper with the T your sight on it and the bandit grip. So my reflex to just go forward with it is really, really high. Alright. Can we one shot Handsome Jack? That's all I gotta know. Oh, but we can certainly try. Oh my goodness, that was a lot of damage. Alright, we'll wait for Warrior to transition. And then we'll try to hit him with it too. We can't really slag him because our timer is so long. But just with the extra 500% damage, we don't really need the slag, so it's okay. Alright, let's see. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, actually, yeah. But that's better. Four levels under two? Yeah, 
But I mean, it's normal mode and also bada boom, you know? It doesn't really matter what level we are, because we just have that going for us. As cheap as it is, if you want a consistent way to kill normal mode warrior, slag, and then bada. And then if you have enough magazine, or if you have enough stockpile, you can just guarantee the kill. But if not, you might have to hang out a little bit and just ship them down the rest of the way. But that's where the Maggie kicks in. Cool. Normal mode done. So now, we get to go push pirate DLC until Grendel, so that we can use Grendel to farm out blue comms to see what they look like. And then we are going to just walk into the first part of Tina DLC and see what those look like. And then that'll be day two. Am I big brain or am I dumb brain? So if I... I already reloaded the character. Oh well. Alright, so Spectre comms get fire rate and reload speed and waylay and sidearm tactics and haste. So waylay, once again, is the extra damage from behind or if they're distracted. And then this is extra damage and reload speed for pistols and SMGs, and extra swap speed, which is really, really nice. So those would be super cool to have too. Let's go ahead, test out an idea I have. I'm so smart. All right, so a spook comp. So the spook comm would give heavy ordnance and redirection and haste. Okay. So redirection is extra amp shield damage at the cost of some cooldown reduction from our, our skill. It also gives heavy ordnance and then it also gives plus to haste, which is also our swap speed skill. So that's super duper cool to see. That could be really nice. Zealot is our cooldown rate class mod, it gives redirection and indoctrination, or a waylay. Okay, so redirection is once again this one, and then we get indoctrination, which is more Hyperion stuff, and also waylay, which is once again the enemies that are looking away. There are a lot of comms with that, and I don't know if I like that quite yet, but that is a thing that a lot of them appear to be having. So maybe we'll just have to get used to it, or something like that. Obliterator. That one actually is interesting to me. So waylay, which is once again the enemies behind you thing. Heavy ordnance, shotguns, and SM or sniper buff. Or focused aim. Which is our weapon accuracy and recoil reduction. Alright, cool. So, that's that one. Deceiver comms come with pistol fire rate and mag size and sidearm tactics, cyclone lash, and boiling point. So, that is... Boiling point is over here. So, it gives you stacking elemental status effect damage. That's kind of cool. Cyclone lash, which is over here, gives you... Chance to deflect bullets while you're running. And then it had sidearm tactics, which is the SMG and pistol stuff. Uh, Dreadlord, lacerate momentum, or atonement. Okay, so killing blow. Or it also gives momentum, which is the extra move and jump height. Or atonement, which is the reduced health stuff. So that's cool. And then the asp, which is... Boiling point, corrosive bite, or repellent. Okay, so that should be all of them by this point. So repellent, corrosive bite, and boiling point. So reduced status effect duration, which could mean it could get up to 100%, which I doubt makes it insta-wipe them, but if it does, that's really OP for late game. Uh, extra corrosive damage. And then the stacking corrosive damage stuff, too. So that's cool. So yeah, we should have pretty much all of them that we're looking at here. 
pretty cool overall. I kind of like them. But yeah, that will do it for these. Let's head over to our Tina DLC. I'm totally keeping all the comms just for a single screenshot, and then I'm going to dump them all on the ground. I mean, I'll, I'll save one, maybe. But like, the Legendary Infiltrator is just kind of good. So I don't think I'll use any of the others. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, so... Thick. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a gander here. So this is now called a Warlock class mod. Still has the same plus to skills as like a, a Tinacom would. Well, sorry. It has the same plus to stats that a Tinacom would. So your magazine size, your fire rate, crit, whatever. But it provides sidearm tactics. It provides reversal shift, which none of the other ones have that. After striking enemy, you activate reversal shift, increasing your elemental damage. Okay, so that's nice. And then it has momentum. So this is our if shield is broken, move good skill. So that's pretty cool that we kind of got all of them today. I mean, of course, at level 62, we'll have the tubby comms to look at. But they should just be more advanced versions of these. But it is super duper sick to be able to see all of these like this. And yeah, that will go ahead and do it for day two.